Most mothers protect their young. It's part of the job description. But that's not just humans. That's animals as well. These are the 20 most protective animal mothers. Number 20, polar bears. We've all heard the phrase "mama bear" in terms of how sometimes a human or animal goes to extreme lengths in order to protect her cubs. But when you look at some of these actual bears, their birthing and protection cycle is much more than you'd realize or expect. For example, when it comes to polar bears, they need to do certain things just in order to have children. Such as the fathers being non-existent in the picture, and so the mother polar bear ends up gaining about 400 pounds in order to have the child safely. If she doesn't, she'll reabsorb the fetus. Thankfully, if she's able to get the food she needs, she goes into a much more simple process in order to give birth to her babies. She digs a maternity den, usually in a snowdrift, where she'll then go into a hibernation-like state, where she doesn't eat for two months and also sleeps through the baby's birth. That means that she doesn't have any pain as she gives birth to her cubs. Something that many human mothers wish that they could say about their own pregnancy. As for what happens next, the mother bear will nurture and nurse her cubs. For about two years, in order to make sure that they're ready for what's out there in the world. Not the least of which is that baby polar bear cubs are born blind and toothless, and thus they need their mother's help to survive. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19, penguins. Penguins are honestly very special creatures when it comes to not just having children, but also having both parents take care of them in various ways. You no doubt know about the interchanging roles that penguins have in terms of the mothers laying the eggs and then having the father sit on them in order to protect them as they grow inside. More specifically, emperor penguins always breed during the Antarctic winter, laying their eggs in May. After the female lays her eggs, she'll pass them off to the male, who keeps them warm by tucking them under a pouch of skin above his feet. He balances there for about 64 days, during which time the female travels to the ocean in order to hunt. The male huddles with other males in the colony, and they help each other stay warm while they fast, incubate their eggs, and dutifully wait for their partners to return. Once the mother returns, she actually does a special call out to her male companion in order to find her family amongst the vast numbers of the colony. Now that mother is hunted and has food, she gives it to her young after they've hatched and watches over them as the males take their turn to go out and hunt. This cycle will continue on and on until the young penguins are able to hunt for food on their own. But up until that point, they're dutifully watched over by their mother and father, because a single lapse in their oversight can lead to their little baby penguin dying due to the harshness of their environment and the predators that live within. Number 18, elephants. One could make the argument that elephants have some of the most hardcore mothers for a couple very particular reasons. First and foremost is that giving birth to them is not easy at all. Elephant mothers endure nearly two years of pregnancy. When their babies finally arrive, though, they weigh an average of 200 pounds. Just think about that for a moment. Not only are they pregnant and have to endure all that comes with that for about 24 months, when they do give birth, their babies are as heavy as a full. Grown human, heavier than them. Even that's just the start of what they do. Elephant mothers typically breastfeed their little ones until they're about two or three years old, and baby elephants can drink up to about 20 pints of milk per day. Still not enough for you? Well, while most creatures in the animal kingdom do have their own independence after reaching a certain level of maturity, elephants don't. The mothers will typically stay with their children even up until death. That's a lot of time to bond with your mother, you know. And during that time, she'll be there to hug or kiss or play with her child because they're always there with them. They have such a connection with their children that they literally never forget them, even if they've been separated. I guess it is true. What they say, an elephant does never forget. Number 17, koalas. 
Ah, the koala. One of the definitive animals from the land known as Australia. Is it a country or is it a continent? And how can it be both if it's called two different things? Anyways, the koala is a creature that most people find adorable for a whole host of reasons, not the least of which is that its cute looks and small size are just adorable. But when you dive into what it actually does to survive and help its children, well, it becomes a whole lot. For example, you may remember that the favorite food of the koala is that of eucalyptus leaves, but did you know that they're extremely poisonous? Yes, they eat poisonous food every day. So how is the species still alive? Well, their digestive tract has bacteria that makes the poison a moot point. It's very handy, isn't it? There's just one catch, though. While the mothers are fine chowing down on the stuff because their bodies can handle it, it's not the same to be said of their children. Because when they're born, they don't have that kind of immunity. Perhaps they should just switch over to green beans, like my adorable pet guinea pig Twinkle. What's a mother to do in that situation? Well, it's simple. They feed their children their feces. No, really, the mother takes her own excrement and makes the children eat it. And you thought your mother's cooking was bad. The reason for this, though, is that they can get the bacteria that's needed to build up their immune systems so that they can eventually eat eucalyptus without any issues. Just as important, though, is that they spend the first six months in their mother's pouch doing this and then have a few more months of growth before they move on. Oh, and the mothers? Well, they actually sleep about 22 hours a day. Now that's a job cycle I'd love to have. Number 16. Alligators It's honestly rather interesting talking about alligator mothers because if you think about it, the alligator mothers of the world are never really taken into consideration. Now I think about the children and how they were once pets for people until they were flushed into the sewers, and then you think about the adults in the gender sense as they have a habit of attacking people. But do you honestly know how the mothers of alligators actually take care of their young? Well, first, when they're making their nest, they use a very special ingredient in rotten vegetables. Yes, that's right, but why? Well, the way they make this compost pile, if you will, is they allow it to make its own heat. And as a result of that, they're able to not only lay on their nest like other creatures, as they know that eggs will be warmed constantly, it provides safety and security as well. Once the babies are born, the mothers carry them around in their jaw for protection, assisting them to the water, while they'll then spend the first years of their lives eating fish, insects, snails, and crustaceans. That makes sense if you think about it, because what's more safe than the jaws of an alligator? It's always important to note why the mother alligator goes to such lengths to help their young ones. While most people agree you should never mess with a full-grown alligator, the babies are honestly easy prey, and many predators will come after them. That's why the mother stands guard until the little gators can take care of themselves. Number 15. Pythons We'll begin by talking about an animal species that are actually famous for not being good parents, snakes. While there are tons of snake species out there, a vast majority of them do a very specific thing in terms of raising their children. They actually don't. Usually the mother snake will lay her eggs in a hole, bury them to protect them, and then leave them to their own devices. It's not exactly a mother of the year award material now, is it? But as National Geographic revealed, there's at least one species of egg-laying python that does do a bit of parenting, showing that a mother's love has no boundaries, even if it does have fangs. A reptile researcher by the name of Graham Alexander spent seven years observing southern African pythons, which can grow up to about six feet long and weigh in at 130 pounds and be able to take down animals as large as antelope. In other words, this is a snake that you don't ever want to mess with. As for how they prove to be good mothers, they'll go and absorb excess sunlight into their body via their skin, which changes colors when it does so, and then it goes back to where it's laid its eggs and wraps its body around around them to keep them warm. Apparently, she does this because her eggs aren't mature enough due to excess yolk within them, and as such, they'll be undeveloped when hatched. Some of these mothers even die doing this practice so that they can starve themselves in order to protect their eggs. Now that's dedication. Number 14. Cheetahs 
Cheetahs are amongst some of the coolest and most talked about animals in our world for a very basic reason. They're fast. Like, really fast. In fact, they're the fastest land animal in the world, depending on who you talk to. Why is there always a debate about these things? And they have the ability to even outrace a car. But I'm not here to talk about their blinding speed. I'm here to talk about their motherly abilities, one of the biggest of which is multitasking. What's that, you say? Well, when it comes to litters of cheetahs, there are about four to six cubs to handle, and the mother has to teach every single one of them how to hunt, how to hide from foes, and even to understand the land in which they reside. That's a big job for one mother, let alone having four to six cubs. This is where the twist comes in, because after about two years of all this training, the mother actually leaves her children to go and start another family. The siblings then branch off into two different groups. The brothers will stick together and work together to live, but the females of the group, well, they prefer to be left alone and do life in their own way. That's not exactly what you were expecting now, was it? Perhaps that's an independence thing that they've learned from their mothers, or perhaps they just want to be alone so that certain males will notice them when the time to start their own family comes. Number 13. Orangutan Depending on who you talk to, the orangutan is either an outcast of the monkey or primate family, or something to mock because they tend to be funny or look foolish and act dumb. But don't be mistaken about their actions for their actual intelligence because they honestly have a whole lot of it, especially when it comes to parenting. The highly intelligent orangutan is the ultimate do-it-yourself mother, spending nearly all her life high up in the trees where she builds a new nest every single night from branches and foliage fashioning more than 30,000 homes in her lifetime. That's a whole lot of work. But she does it happily for her children, and that's not all. For the first six to seven years of her children's life, she never puts them down, ever. Rather, she keeps them so close that she can nurture them and ensure that they grow up strong. That's actually the longest period of bonding of this kind in nature. The elephant doesn't really count, as they're not even nursing their child for that long, but merely just staying with them like a huge helicopter parent. The mother will also take that time to teach her children various things, and when it comes to orangutan daughters, they actually stay with their mother much longer than the males so they can learn new mothering techniques themselves. So much so that even when they're 16 years of age, they'll still come and see their mothers to learn from them. Number 12. Red Knobbed Hornbills The Red Knobbed Hornbill is a species of bird that you'll find in Indonesia via the island of Salawesi. They live in holes within trees, and they can make their nests there and protect their eggs. Protection is something that they have to think about constantly because there are a lot of predators that love to eat the eggs, which includes the monitor lizard. So, to combat these predators, the hornbills narrow the entryway to their nests with a very special sealant, their own feces. You've heard of putting up with crap, but these birds are using crap to put up with the enemies. That is disgusting. However, it's also very clever because who would want to wade through all of that for a meal? The catch with this, however, is not to be ignored, because though the mother's willing to do this to shield her children, she's also willing to go the whole nine yards in order to make sure that her eggs are undisturbed. What I mean by that is that the mother red-knobbed hornbill will stay in the hole that their nest is in for months until her eggs are hatched and they're able to take care of themselves. So essentially, she's just starving herself to make sure that her eggs end up okay, not unlike a certain python that I talked about before. Obviously, it works out well for her in the end, but that's a kind of dedication that only certain animals have or are willing to have, and you just have to imagine the smell of that hole isn't really all that pleasant. Number 11. Elephant Seal Elephant seals are massively imposing creatures no matter whether they're male or female. They have the size and bulk for days, and they're not afraid to go and showcase that in all the ways that matter. The female elephant seal generally weighs in at up to 1,700 pounds, but in terms of the males, they can actually weigh up to four times that amount. The thing to note here is that after the female gets pregnant, she'll then begin to bulk up in terms of her weight, to the extent that she gains weight about every day for a 
11 months until it's time for her child to be born. However, after giving birth, she drops about 600 pounds while nursing her cubs in less than a month. Now that's a weight loss plan that many wish they could have. And not that everyone should lose 600 pounds in a month, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Here's where another twist comes in. Despite all that buildup, they only have one child per winter, and you'd think they'd have a litter, but it's just not so. Even more, they only look after their child for about two months before they then let them go off to start preparing for their own journey that many end up never surviving. In fact, a majority of female elephant seals are said to only birth about one to three children in their lifetime before dying due to the methods that are used to have the children in the first place. It's a very grisly way of going about things, but it's almost as if giving birth sealed their fate. Number 10. Octopus the octopus is yet another creature that I'll discuss mostly in regards to their adult forms, but I don't really talk about much in terms of how they handle their young, which is sad because as you're about to find out, they do a whole lot. For example, a female octopus can lay up to 50,000 eggs, taking in around 40 days for the eggs to develop before hatching. The mother stays close the entire time, protecting them from predators while gently blowing currents of water over them to provide oxygen. Oh, and due to her being on guard all the time, she learns that she herself is very tasty, as she'll eat one of her own tentacles in order to survive. Though the term survive is very much a short-term thing, because the mother octopus is going to die not too long after her eggs begin to hatch. This literally gives everything that she has in order to ensure that her children are born. Now, obviously, this isn't a guarantee in terms of her having enough energy to care for all of her eggs, and there's also that possibility possibility that the mother will lay too few eggs, however the process ends in death every time. Number 9. Sea Louse This one may be a bit disgusting, so you can't say you haven't been warned. It's just going to get freaky, like anime mixed with horror movie freaky. Or you know, just anime freaky. The sea louse is a mother who deserves a lot of credit for enduring a lot of things during her life, especially when it comes to breeding her children. Her journey, if you will, comes when a male sea louse decides to mate with her and brings her back to his den to do so. That's when the first hammer drops, as sea louses have harems. That's right, a male can sometimes have up to 25 different partners that breed his children. Oh, but it does get worse, a whole lot worse. Once she's pregnant, her whole purpose is then to stay there and wait for the children to be born by literally eating their way out of their mother. That's right, this is the horror element, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and the mother, well, she's alive for all of this, so she's literally feeling her children devour her from the inside out, and then they leave her behind as if she's just discarded trash. Number 8. Orcas now we know that it's hard to recover from that last entry, but I do need to keep going, and this time I'm talking about the orca. During the first month of their newborn's life, there's no rest for an orca mother. The orca calves don't sleep a wink during the first month, and neither does their mother. On an average, orcas sleep or float motionlessly in the water for about six to eight hours, but when the calf is around, they swim continuously for a month in order to avoid predators and build the calf's muscles and fat reserves. That's a whole lot of work for the mother, but it also makes sense given where they live and what's around them. And if you think about it, you're not strong enough to swim in the oceans, especially at a certain place, you're going to be food for even the weakest of predators. And since the baby orca is small in comparison to its mother, that's an easy target if it doesn't have a bodyguard around. So she ends up not sleeping a wink, you know, just like human mothers with their babies for the first few months. Number 7. Wolf Spiders And now for something that I hate to talk about a whole lot, and that's spiders. But why do I hate them, you may ask? Well, they once tried to attack my pet guinea pig Twinkle, and that will never be forgiven. Despite spiders clearly being monsters, they apparently are really good mothers, though. 
They carry unborn spider babies on their back around in a silken globe, the egg sac that's attached at the end of the mother spider's abdomen. And unlike other mothers on this list that stick close to their babies no matter what, the wolf spider is able to hunt and eat while they have their children on their back. But wait, there's more. Eventually, the eggs will hatch. And so what does the mother do then? Well, it's simple. She goes and carries her baby spiders on her back. That's right, she never stops protecting them until they can go out on their own and survive. And then hopefully they stay away from Twinkle. Number six, Strawberry Poison Dart Frog. If I can be honest here, that's a name that's both delicious sounding and yet utterly terrifying at the same time. Strawberry automatically makes you hungry just saying the name, but then you hear the term poison dart frog and you want nothing to do with it anymore. Found in the rainforests of Central and South America, the extremely beautiful strawberry poison dart frog is the most poisonous of animals alive. The mother dart frog literally goes to extreme lengths in order to ensure the safety of her children. That's because she'll end up laying six eggs and then just waits around for them to hatch. The catch here is that if she waits too long for her children to grow in the tadpole phase, they'll actually end up eating each other. Yikes! So to combat this, the mother frog will take each tadpole to its own pool of water and then goes from each spot to the next in order to tend to her children. That's a whole lot of dedication in order to ensure that each tadpole is taken care of. Number 5. Possums Possums aren't exactly a creature that you'd likely think about a whole lot, but in truth they're a very good mothering type, not the least of which is that they have a lot of children if things go their way. That includes one person finding a mother that had up to 15 all at once. That's a whole lot of work. Baby possums leave the uterus and make their way up to their mother's belly into her pouch, where each baby latches onto one of 13 nipples by swallowing it. The young possums complete their development in the pouch, eventually venturing out of the pouch for longer and longer periods. As their eyes open, their reflexes develop, and their curiosity expands. Once they reach a certain age, they'll then climb onto the mother's back, and it's up to them to protect them from that point on. Though apparently, if they get off her back or even fall off on their own, she ends up leaving them behind. Given how many she has to take care of, it's understandable as why she doesn't go back. Number 4. Goats Goats are a tricky breed when it comes to mothering, even to the extent that there are actually guides to help farmers ensure that their female goats are good mothers and not just abandon their young after having them, because that apparently happens a lot. However, when a good mother goat is had, she'll go to great lengths to protect her young, not the least of which is nursing her children for as long as they can or need it, hiding them from predators and so on. Each kid has a unique call, and along with its scent, that's how the mother recognizes it from birth, not by sight. A very useful tool if you think about it, and one that works in the mother's favor. Oh, and if a mother on a farm is deemed to be not a good mother, they're basically dead weight as they're losing profit because of their inability to raise their children. Number 3. Dolphin Dolphins are socially skilled, intelligent, agile, joyful, and playful animals that share many emotional similarities with humans, which is no doubt why we like them so much and have fun with them at water parks. But when it comes to them being mothers, they're actually really good at their jobs. Dolphin mothers become teachers as soon as their baby emerges, the first lesson being how to breathe. They're also fierce protectors of their children, which shouldn't be that much of a surprise given that dolphins are one of the few that regularly stand up to sharks. Another thing they'll do is teach their children how to have fun, no doubt helping the species be a much more enjoyable breed and not just fun to watch fly out of the water. Their social circles also make sure to protect both mothers and potential mothers so that the best possible child can be born and raised. Number 2. Giraffe Here's a fun fact. Giraffes give birth 
standing up. This is an important fact for a very basic reason. After a pregnancy of 15 months, giraffes will give birth to a calf that weighs about 100 to 150 pounds and stands 6 feet tall. Yes, they have that size baby inside of them for months, and then they drop it like it's hot and it's already huge. And within no time at all, they're already standing on their feet and walking around. That's the animal kingdom, everyone. The mother doesn't have to raise her little giraffe alone, though. Giraffes actually have a babysitting system, if you will, where the mother can leave her baby with other females while she goes out to hunt and find food for them. They're always on guard, protecting themselves and their offspring, so they only get about 30 minutes of sleep per day, usually just a few minutes at a time. However, they'll do that if it means ensuring their baby's survival, the harm of poachers, and the dangers to their habitat. Number 1. Gorillas Gorillas are said to be our closest relatives in the animal kingdom, and you've no doubt heard stories of gorillas protecting human children at certain points. But how good are they at raising their own? Gorillas bond and stay together as family units throughout their lives, showcasing the bond that the parents have with their children and the desire to stay close to them no matter what. After they're born, the baby gorilla is then put upon the back of the mother and they grasp onto their fur as they move them around. The mother gorillas are very protective and thus will keep constant guard of her child, though the mother will also do more gentle things like cuddle, clean, and play with her young one. That's all from the realm of animal mothers. Which of these were the most surprising when it comes to how much they protect their babies? And did you already know about some of these fierce animal mothers? Do you know of another animal mom that should be on the list? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.